Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's myself, Paul Neal, and I'm here to bring you the Start and Eleven show for the biggest game in Ireland's history for a long time, obviously since that 5-1 defeat to Denmark in the Aviva Stadium. This time we're away, we're in Bratislava. We're in a period now where we don't have any fans attending the games, um, unfortunately. Yeah, I think Gary Spain is, at the moment, he's okay to go to the game, but he has to wait to see what the government say. But um, he will be at the game. But anyway, we're going to get in and pick the team that I would like to see start against Slovakia. This team I'd like to see Stephen Kenny pick, not necessarily the team that he will pick. So, in goals, Darren Randolph, the experienced head, the one that keeps the calmness, the one that talks at the back. I was at the game against Finland and you could hear him just, he was the dominant force at the back, just constantly, like I know all keepers do that, but of all the defenders and stuff like that, and the guy, he was obviously the loudest because he's the keeper. But um, yeah, great head and shoulders and you know, don't see anyone coming in and take Darren's place. He's the calmest at the back. <clears throat> then Matt Doherty at right back, Seamus Coleman's obviously injured and out for this one. And Matt Doherty, I think it takes away that scenario of oh, Coleman Doherty. It's Doherty, he didn't play for Spurs the weekend. He should be fresh. Um, he should have a run of game or yeah, a run of games and some freshness in his game as well. After playing a couple of games, the last time he came in, he was under preseason. So he's in there now. He's in there on merit as well because he had the jersey from the last couple of games. Um, Shane Duffy played fantastically well at Celtic. Um, a few goals, a few assists and a lot of really good performances for Celtic. People will argue the level that he's playing at, but I think once Shane Duffy's playing regular football, I don't think you need to worry about uh, his level. I think you'll see a far better Shane Duffy to the one we've seen a month ago. And then John Egan, he's had a bit of a mixed start to the season. Results haven't gone Sheffield United's way. He obviously got a red card for I thought was very harsh. So he's having a bit of an up and down start to the season. Um, but again, I think he'll be fine to step in, and and I think it, it like him and Duffy are a brilliant partnership. Maybe last time they were playing together, they didn't really have a run of games under their belt at the time. But look, I think you can't really go without setting the two of them. They're the two informed centre backs, and you have Kevin Long there to step in if needs be. He's a good cover, or he's a good backup uh, if needs be if anything happens. Um, and then a left back. End of Stevens, no competition. I think he's without doubt our best left back. Has, has done all right in the Premier League this season. Um, had a decent game against Arsenal there the other day. So uh, I've got my end at left back. I think that's a bit of a no brain. I think most of you would agree with that back four and the keeper. Um, and I think, you know, unless you really have a vendetta against the players that are in that defence and goalkeeping situation, then you would agree pretty much. So in midfield and as the sitting defensive midfielder uh, James McCarthy again he's a lot of minutes under his belt with, with Crystal Palace I know they got spanked there the other day but you know he got a good win against Manchester United he was a key part of that then they obviously played against um, Chelsea there and got B4-0 but you know I can't really say he was at fault for any of the goals or anything like that and the way they were set up with the 4-4-2 and the way Chelsea were set up they, they got a bit overrun in the midfield and it kind of showed towards the end of the game but look James McCarthy I think coming in there again I talk about having that freshness when I talk about the last game he played um, against Bulgaria he just didn't look fresh I think the job would be for him now is to try and get on the ball and um, drop it deep try and get the ball and turn out and try and bring other players into play and, and kind of penetrate through the lines whether he could do that or not is a, is a different thing his best role is kind of just sweeping up you know anything along there um kind of scanning between the just in front of the defense you know scanning the fullbacks positions when the fullbacks go forward that's generally what he's good at you know breaking up the play there um and then in midfield just in front of them uh, this is a 4-3-3 formation that he's probably gonna go with um i would have connor howerton in there again i know he was um not playing for villa against liverpool but he had started the season really really strongly um, Ross Barkley seemed to come in for Villa and Connor was ultimately put to the back of the queue for whatever reason but I'm going to go with Connor in here and I think this is a game Taylor made for him to get a set piece or a free kick or something like that and really put a, a stamp and a kind of marker on his international career because he's never really been a guaranteed start and I think if he gets a good goal like he did against Georgia 
he might just start putting a stamp on a marker on that position for himself because, you know, I think I looked at the fantasy football and he's got, um, I think, the most points of outfield players, I think, since the start of the season. Or maybe it was going back to lock, to lockdown. But either way, he's had a serious amount of uh, influence within goals for Aston Villa. So hopefully he can hopefully do something. And Jeff Hendrick has you know, started bright with Newcastle. And hopefully he can continue that form. He obviously scored a nice goal against West Ham as a while back now. But hopefully he can uh, you know, do something. <laughs> get us a goal or, or whatever it is, get an assist. But you know, hopefully this game he'll start being a bit more effective and, and kind of using his energy and athleticism around the, the park. And, and it allows them for midfielders like Jack Byrne or whatever to come off the bench if we need them. Because I think, I think we will need them, especially if we go a goal down. And we're on the hour mark. I think Jack to come on for one of those midfielders I mentioned. Um, I'd be happy enough with that. I think most people would. You've obviously got Malumbi and stuff there. Again, I think the Ben should be just a fine marker for this one. Um, then on the left, I would go with Aaron Connolly. I think he's got the, the pace, the power. And he scares teams when he gets in behind. And we've seen this. And there's evidence of it in the Premier League as well. You look at what he did against Burnley the last game of the season for Brighton. You know, you look at what he did against Man United. I know people were saying he was diving and stuff like that, but he does scare the opposition with his pace. So I think to have him in there to give them, you know, to have their wits about them the whole time, I think it's important to have him in there for that. So I'll have Aaron Connolly on, on my left hand side, and I'll have Didzy through the middle. He obviously scored a brilliant goal against Arsenal the other day. He finished his first ninety minutes as well, and Aaron Connolly had been finishing a lot of ninety minutes as well. A lot of like completed games, starting games, and um, I know he came off the other day, but he'd been starting games and playing a lot, of, a lot of minutes. Whereas before it was on the bench and coming on and getting barely a lot of minutes. So yeah, it's just uh, I, I, I'm glad to see Dizzy obviously getting back on the score sheet. He's got an absolute cracker against Arsenal with his left foot pinger. Hopefully he can do something like that for us. Um, scored the goal against Switzerland, which was a very important goal, obviously the equaliser in the group but if he can get a big goal like that that'd be fantastic and, uh, and I just hope he can and then I'm kind of t- torn on the on the right hand side who we go with Callum Robinson Robbie Brady Callum O'Dowda but I think the way that Callum Robinson started this season I think it's only fair to have Callum Robinson on that right hand side now in saying that he could go for any of those three through the middle as well but I think that he would probably go with a 4-3-3 and in that style of formation and I think that's a strong formation but the only problem I have is that I'm not mad on Callum Robinson on the right hand side but he's coming into this game with a lot of form behind him so if he goes 4-3-3 you'd be hoping that Callum can link up with Matt Doherty on that right hand side and hopefully you know provide some goals and you never know what way he might change it up but that with those players that I've mentioned we do then have options. We've got James McLean off the bench. We've got Shane Long. We've got uh, Robbie Brady. We've got Callum O'Dowda. We've got Jack Byrne. We've got Jason Malumbi. We've got Alan Brown. You know, and, and I can go on. But we do have we do have players there that on on the bench that can come on. Adam Eda, another another one. So we have players there that can come on and affect the game. And we've got pace. So. That's my team. Anyway, let, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you want to get one of these uh, t-shirts, they're our own, and you can check it out. The link will be in the comments, irishfantv.myshopify.com. And uh, head over, get yourself a t-shirt. We have a, a whole new range coming in soon, and we'll have a new range as well ahead of Christmas. But now would be a perfect time to get yourself a nice t-shirt and uh, support us, if you can. Obviously, we're going through a situation at the moment where everyone's in the pandemic so uh, if you can happy days if you can't no problem Um, hopefully this is going to be a good week anyway check out we've uh, press conferences with Callum Robinson Callum O'Dowda we've got my match preview with Gary um, I even did a pro evolution game between Ireland and Slovakia and uh, that was a bit um, dramatic so head over to our YouTube channel you can check out all these videos because they're all there I'll speak to you soon thanks for watching Take care. Come on, you boys in green.